Artifact and government. So um, today, basically, what um, Creative Mornings did was to invite me to talk about the theme of uh, reuse. And so, the the topic that I'm oh, sorry, the to the topic that I'm going for is um, actually the power of constraints and how we actually um, how ac how reusing stuff um, helps me with constraints of time because basically we start we started. Um, artifact and government, right? For since September, so that's about six, seven months. And within the six, seven months, right? We actually reused a lot of our resources within our constraints. And what I'm going to go through today is how we actually managed to do that. Yeah. So that's um, artifact, and that's government. Artifact, um, like he said, it's an upcycling shop. So I'll explain what upcycling is for those who don't know. Who knows what upcycling is? Okay. Okay. Basically, this is our shop. Um, it's a small, humble shop at uh, Everton Park. Those are my two other very handsome partners. Um, so basically, what we do, right? What upcycling is is um, taking unwanted stuff, stuff that you find along the road, stuff that you find behind your HDB flats, and basically find a use for it, like to repurpose it and giving it a new life. So, for example, like um, the top image over there. It used to be a window from an old shop house, and it was really abandoned. Nobody wanted to use it, so we decided to take that, add um, cast iron legs to it, and it becomes a coffee table. Um, also, there's a there's a signboard over there that belonged to this old uncle in Malaysia, so he he didn't want a signboard anymore, and we thought it's actually very charming, and just throwing it away just doesn't do any justice to it. So we decided to take that and make it into a working desk. Okay, this is uh, one example of um, uh, a National Day billboard, right? That was done, this is like the 26th National Day, so I don't know what's the birthday this year, but yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, many years ago, right? So, so we found that, coincidentally, behind our shop, and we were thinking, like, that's pretty cool. So we didn't know what to do with it initially, so um, we were thinking, we needed a door for the toilet. Yeah, so that's our toilet door. Yeah, and um, if you if if you go around a lot of uh, like HDB blocks and stuff, right, you actually find a lot of wooden pallets. You know, stuff that people actually bring like their 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 supplies and stuff like that, and it's always there, without fail. You will just see it every morning, every night. You will see it there. So we decided to take that and we we, we tried it out. We tried to make it into a sofa set. Um, we tried a number of times. We failed because we weren't trained carpenters. So um, we actually brought it to um, the people that actually know how to create these things. And um, the difficult part of it was, it was very difficult to actually find carpenters or contractors who actually know how to do this. Because they'll be like, OK, I want to, I want to take pallets, and I want to make it into a sofa. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, OK, how do you do that? You know? So <laughs> we had to design the thing. And it works both ways. Um, we actually find stuff, and then we design them. You get what I mean? Like, like we don't actually think of a design and go out and find stuff. because we will never know what we find. And that's the beauty of it. You know, we can find a pallet. We can find an old signboard. We can find um, an old door, and et cetera. And, and, and it's just endless, you know, the things that you can find and the things that you can create. So this is the range of stuff that we have um, in the shop right now, um, from doors to um, fruit crates, coke crates. We've got beer crates. We've got all kinds of crates. Um, we have windows. We have recycled wood. We have all sewing machine legs, we have breadboards, basically anything that you can find at home or outside in a coffee shop, we basically take them. Yeah, so that is um, Artifact. Um, government is more of an advertising agency. Um, what we 
what we do is not the conventional advertising kind of stuff. Um, we actually do more brand experience and uh, activation, on-ground activation. So um, about reusing, right? The, the, the first project that we had was with Zookout. So from Artsifact, we basically reused the resources that we had from Artsifact, right? And we actually created this um, aquarium with, okay, you can't really see it, but um, these are all materials, right, that were from Zook itself. So they had like the disco balls and we made it into starfish, um, sea urchins. And then there were like old bottles and cans when we made it into like fishes and stuff like that. So that's one idea of reusing. And we saved a lot of time. Actually, we only did this in a matter of two months, I think. So, yeah. Um, also for a photo shoot for Absolute Vodka, we actually used that familiar signboard that you saw on the previous slide as a base. So, yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, I need to find a background, I need to find a texture, something interesting, something vintage. What do I have? And then I look through the stuff in my shop and, hey, you know, I actually have a signboard, I can use it. So, yeah. Um, a few of the clients that we have right now, um, we actually uh, have Singtel. We, we did work with Singtel. We did work with uh, Absolute Vodka. And um, this is a, in a matter of six months. So this plus Artifact, right, is actually quite a crazy thing. And um, come to think of it, reusing as a, as, as a formula to what we do, right, was actually a very uh, crucial. It was very important to us how we actually managed to reuse our resources. So. Um, today, I would like to talk about how we use these resources. Um, there's two kinds of resources that we are using. One is the physical resource and the non-physical resource. So physical resource, right, is basically like what you saw for Artifact, um, using anything that you can find. The non-physical resource is basically stuff like your friends, you know, like um, <laughs> stuff that you have um, online, um, stuff that you've done before, etc., and so on and so forth. So um, this is just a guideline. This is my own guideline, and I'd just like to share it with you. First thing is make a lot of friends, right? Because um, you never know when the, um, they might be useful in any way, right? For example, like um, if I'm doing an event, and I'm not an events person, right? I don't know anything about the technical aspects of it and stuff like that, but I have friends that know. you know. So I give them a call, and they are willing to help me. And that saves me a lot of time. Um, so this is my Facebook and my LinkedIn. Um, I'm not illustrating that I'm the most popular person in the world, but um, I do have a lot of friends. And it's not because I want to be popular, but it's because of that, actually, that the actual reason that the more friends you know, um, the easier jo your job will be, the easier your life will be. Um, the second thing is bookmark your websites. Um, are, there, are there any designers here, creative? I'm sure you have a lot of bookmarks. And I think the bookmarks are very important. Um, you go to all these different sites. These are probably one of my favorite sites. And um, what I do to these websites, I not only bookmark them, but I actually print them out on a contact sheet. And I have like folders. So as and when, right, when I'm like in a brainstorm with my partners and stuff, right, it becomes a lot easier. And you save a lot of time rather than just thinking of an idea from scratch. You have inspiration from all these sites. Make full use of them, because I think this is really, really important. OK, um, this is something that I truly believe in. This is my Bible, right? I never, never, never delete my files, or my working files, or my artwork, or my inspirations, because you really never know when you need it. And sometimes, right, an idea just pops up while you're looking through these folders. So I actually have, like, I have a crazy amount of folders, actually. It's like, within that folder, I have, like, 100 different folders. And within that 100 folders, I have another 100 folders. So I will label them visuals, uh, corporate identity, designs, inspiration, photography, stuff like that. So when, when you are in that, that crunch time period, right, where you're constrained of time, you know, your deadline is like, OK, the brief came in two days ago, and I have to present today. You know, that constraint is the tricky part. And when you have stuff like this, right, it comes very useful. So these are like a few of the stuff that I have um, that I've actually kept. So it could be anything. And whatever I find that's interesting online, right, I just screen grab it or I save as a JPEG and I just keep it in all the different folders that I have. Important thing about folders, I'm actually quite a messy person. So I think it's best to really label what it is so it speeds up time even faster. OK, um, keep old notebooks, right? 
Um, I have a habit of keeping old notebooks and I don't like I don't really throw them away because there's a lot of things that you write in notebooks, you know, and sometimes you never know whatever you write, right, might apply to something you're doing in the future. So okay, this is not my notebook, right? Um, my notebook is a lot messier than this. Uh, yeah, so I, I think there's some things that you just write unknowingly, you know, like when an idea comes to your head when you wake up or even when you're, when, you're, when you're sleeping and you just write it down, but you don't know when you're ever going to use it. And this actually happened to me a couple of times where I'm sleeping and I just wake up in the middle of the night, right? I take a pen and I just write something. And there was a campaign that I did recently and I actually used that line. I don't know how, but I just kind of linked it together. So. I think that is also very important. Um, respect your ex. <laughs> okay, it's not your ex-girlfriend um, or your boyfriend. I'm, I'm talking about your ex-colleagues, um, the people that you used to work with, because I think that's also very important. Um, you'll never know when you need a job, or you'll never know when you need to find something within a crucial time. Um, I think this is actually very relevant to the stuff that I do for Artifact and for government. Um, in terms of like my ex, uh, my ex company, DDB, right? The, the, the people that I work with, I was very close to them. And a lot of times, there are things that I'm not sure of, I'll ask them. And a lot of times, like, the people there have always told me, you know, like, don't worry, you know, if you fail in your business, you can always come back. Right? It's okay. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So like, I think it's, it's, it's good to have like, like good relations with. Um, your ex-colleagues and people that you work with, then just don't burn bridges. It's not a good thing. Um, yeah, so basically, um, limited resources is, is something that uh, a lot of us will have at a certain point of time. And I think with that, right, yeah. if you have the optimum usage of like whatever stuff, whatever material that you have, and you can reuse it, reuse it as much as you can. And to me, that is the, the formula of the power of constraints. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, so do we have any questions from the floor? <clears throat> yep, this gentleman over there. With the, with the furniture you're repurposing, do you have to do much refinishing of any of the materials that you find? And for example, like the bathroom door, do you have to reframe it to fit a particular size? Or mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, for certain things, right, we actually like to keep it raw. Um, some people like to keep it raw, like, like the toilet door. If we actually had a lacquer over it, it'll look nice and stuff, but it really depends on you, like how you want it to be. Some people like it polished and clean with a new coat of paint and stuff like that, but we do do the basic stuff like the punishing, um, adding the empty termite lacquer over it and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we do that and we actually have to cut it to size. Um, yeah, but it's to each their own, actually, because yeah, like I said, some people actually like really um, um, polished stuff and some just like it raw. So yeah, yeah, do that. Thank you for your question. Uh, is there another one? Hi, I'm Hi. Jacob from Hyperion. Um, I love the idea of the constraint. So for example, when you ideate, when you have a creative session, when you brainstorm, do you put like a limit to it, like 15 minutes? Um, or do you sort of create this kind of almost, you know, you, you sort of, you've got actual constraints, but then you can put almost like virtual constraints on yourself in order to... Uh, As in terms of like the time limit that I put to myself or... For example, yeah. Okay, to, to me, I think usually my time limit is the day before the presentation. Right, so that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> and, and that's the constraint part of it because like, you know, um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stress, you know, when you're coming up with um, ideas, when you're trying to brainstorm stuff and Usually, the, the, usually you stick to the first idea. You think that that's the best idea of all, but that's never the, that's never the case. Mm -hmm. So you, like for me, I just need to keep going, keep going, going through like the, the thousands of folders that I have and stuff like that and try to come up with something at the end of it. And I think once you, once you nail it, right, you know exactly what it is, you know it's gonna work. Even though it's like a few hours before the presentation, right? you may not even go in with a full-fledged deck, but at least you got the idea right. So I think to me, I'll just push it all the way to the end. Thank you. Any more questions? This lady. Hi, Sonia. Hi. Um, your upcycling idea is really inspiring and it looks really beautiful. I'm, I'm wondering if you have a vision for upscaling that um, in terms of 
you know, everybody in Singapore has stuff they want to get rid of, like creating a community of reuse and expanding that concept or that way of life? Um, I think we actually, ha we have plans of doing that um, in Singapore. It's just that right now, the, I think the trend is it's slowly growing. It's not that impactful right now. Like a lot of people appreciate it. You know, they think it's cool. They think it's, it's, it's cool and, and, and they would love to have a piece of that, but they don't buy it, you know. Because they actually have, they love the idea of it, but they don't see that at home. They don't see that because I think the trend of it right now, it's more of like vintage furniture. You know, your Scandinavian take furniture and stuff like that. So I think there is a growing population right now. It's, we're not sure if it's premature. Like it's, it's too niche at the moment, but we do have plans for that, especially in Singapore, because um, you look at it, buildings are being torn down rapidly, right? And you got all your, like, the, the, I, I mean, I used, to, I used to live in Armenian Street, which is um, where my grandma's place used to be. And there was like the Capitol building, there was the old MPH, there was the old National Library and stuff like that, and everything's gone, right? So, but there are a lot of things, you know, within the buildings that you can actually keep, you know? Um, Recently, the Capitol Cinema, they actually tore down the whole place and they're going to build a new cinema and hotels and shopping malls and stuff like that. So we actually, we actually found out that they were giving away the cinema seats, the really, really old cinema seats, you know, like purple, cast iron stuff, it's really cool. And I actually have like a five-seater and three two-seaters. I really stored it in my warehouse. So we're going to refurbish it and stuff like that and I'm probably going to give it to my grandma because she used to grow up in that era and like she would really appreciate it and she would think, you know, like this is something that I could have sat on, you know, during my first date. So I think like that is very important and what we want to achieve is something like that for Singapore. You know, something that people can remember, something that people can look at and go like, that was part of my history and I at least have a piece of that at home. So I think that right now, um, the stuff that we have, right, uh, is from Malaysia, it's from Thailand, um, China, Australia, so on and so forth. But I think the next step of it is more like concentrating on Singapore itself. So I think it becomes more meaningful to us and more meaningful to um, the consumers. So, yeah. Thank you. Noella? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, Noella, yes. Um, how do you find your stuff? Like, where do you, do you spend a lot of time wandering around construction sites? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I thought it was a tricky question. Where do I find myself? <laughs> yeah, on eBay or something. Yeah. Um, well, I seen like where, where we go and find stuff yeah, or? Yeah. Actually anywhere. Um, I mean, we can be at like Simpang Bodo. You know, we can be at Amokyo, we can be at Bishan, we can be at Lim Chu Kang. We can be just driving along, um, going for a meeting, you know, and Suddenly, we see this um, old estate which is being torn down. And we're like, hey, stop, 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 stop. You know, we'll get out, right, and we'll run down, and hopefully, we'll avoid the foreman, right, and we'll just sneak into the place. You know, and then there'll be like workers there and stuff like looking at you, and like, who the hell are you? You know? So we go in. This is actually what happened. Um, we were at River Valley, and we actually did drive past, and we saw this old place, and we stopped. So we walked in, and immediately, the foreman saw us. So they're like, hey, no, go out, go out, go out. And we just told him, okay, look, uh, we saw a lot of window grills that you guys are gonna like tear down and you're gonna like throw it away probably. Is there any use? Is there something that, you know, that we can take a look and maybe we can like buy it from you and stuff like that. So, so the guy was saying, you can't come in here with slippers without a helmet and stuff like that. So come back with your helmet and your boots and maybe we can talk. <laughs> yeah, so um, we did that. <laughs> So we went to Mustafa Center, we bought the helmet, we bought the boots, and we went there and we bought a few grills. So um, I think it's very strange how it works because you really never know what you're gonna find. You know, so um, also recently, actually I think it was just yesterday, we were driving along um, Ballester Road and we saw this um, speed limit sign, right? 60 speed limit on the floor. So I was driving, my friend was driving by and I spotted it. So he basically jam brake right at the traffic light. I got out and I ran. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be on video, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the things you do for a passion, right? Uh, so I ran, 
I was carrying this signboard, right, running along the main road, and everybody was like, this is Joker doing. <laughs> but yeah, so I wouldn't know what I'm going to do with it. You know, like, like that signboard could be something that um, I could put up on the wall in my own house. I could make it into a table. I could make it into a, a, a chair. You know, stuff like that. So it's very, um, ideas come along the go. You know, like whatever we find, we think of something. So I think that's the, that's the beauty of upcycling. You just never know what you can make out of whatever you find. So, yeah, basically anywhere. You can start by your neighborhood. Thank you, Vanilla. Uh, uh, who's your target market? Who's it's a very good question because when we started out right this thing and we were actually the first in Singapore to to do an upcycling um, shop so we, because we do um, a lot of custom jobs as well so from the start of it right the first time we actually sat down and okay guys how much is, how much is this gonna cost how much is that gonna cost you know how are we gonna justify stuff like that and initially it was just about okay that's gonna be two thousand eight hundred and thirty three and, and we don't know why you know and then <laughs> and then um, because we, we we were all advertising train and we know nothing about the financial business nothing at all we didn't know how to market it we didn't know how much this would cost in, in certain shops so we didn't actually go out to furniture shops to look at, okay, this table at IKEA costs $800. So we're going to match that along our um, HDB door table kind of thing. How we measure it more is the, the, the workmanship behind it um, and the, 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 the design concept behind it. So it can range. If it's a very simple thing, for example, if it's a, if it's a beer crate, right? And, um, all we need to do is just add a latch, um, like, a, like a lid over it so that you can actually store, you can keep your, your beer bottles in there, add a few pencil legs and stuff like that. The workmanship is not a lot. So based on like, the wood material, the design concept, maybe if we add a fabric on top of that, we just factor that in. So that, okay, the crate comes free. The workmanship is... Let me just do the math. Um, that will cost about 250, give or take. Um, the reason why we, we put it up to that price, right, is because number one, it is one off, right? Like, so you, you won't find this anywhere else in any other household. So that's yours and that's unique. So we sell that idea of it. Um, the other thing that we, we, we we like to elaborate is the story behind these things. Because a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that we find right, has some kind of history to it, like the signboard or like um, a window grill that used to be from an old estate and stuff like that. So when we sell the stuff to the customer, when we tell them about this thing, right, we're not just selling you a table, we're actually selling you a story. So I think that becomes a lot more meaningful. So yeah, I hope that answers all. <laughs> okay, if it's a final question. yeah. Okay, okay, sure. Um, one is um, how, how related your two businesses, the artifacts and the government, how related they are. And number two is when you do your advertising work with government um, and you do a lot of like this upcycling, do you worry like in the future people would see your agency as, oh, if I want some upcycled like um, activations, then I then I go to you, but I don't go to for other stuff. Um, okay, so the first question is, okay. how are they correlated, right? Um, okay, initially, when we started out, right, it was supposed to be just government, the advertising agency, and um, we needed furniture for the office. <laughs> so we decided, why not reuse the stuff that we have, or, you know, find stuff that... Um, that find stuff that, uh, that, that's, that's around the estate and stuff like that and create our own furniture. So that's how we started upcycling and that's how Artifact was born. Um, the correlation to, to, to Artifact and government, it's, it's a very, I think it's a very thin line because like not a lot of, um, not a lot of campaigns that we have for, 
government, right, for the advertising side of it, it's, it's not really upcycling related. You know, like some, some of the stuff is like for, for Singtel, for example, you wouldn't want to see a sewing machine table in their concept kind of thing because everything is like phone, 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 phone. So um, if it's stuff like Absolute Vodka, where the campaign allows you to, to be a little bit raw, to be a little bit more uh, industrial and stuff like that. So that is where there's a correlation to Artifact. So we can actually take the resource from Artifact, right, and say, okay, look, we have a signboard table. Uh, we actually have um, like window grills that you can use for this concept, or maybe for an exhibition space. You know, there's a lot of things that we need to fill the space up with, and because the whole idea, because the whole concept is very, um, it's very raw, it's very, um, it's very to the idea itself, right? We can take all of that and we can put it into the space. So I think that is that's how it works. Because we are more or less like a six-month um, company, right? So far, the only thing that has worked with us, with Artifact and government, is um, Zook, for Zook Out, and Absolute Vodka. So we wouldn't know in the future like how the correlation is going to be. Um, the second question is about like would people perceive Artifact as a upcycling slash advertising agency, right? Do you worry people always don't see you as like, oh, don't go to government for posters or you know, okay. above the line or anything? They only do activation or Okay. Um, we don't want to be an ATL agency. We don't want to be a, a, a poster agency because like, to us, how, what, what we believe in is not um, ATL driven or TVC driven as the umbrella idea. What we believe in is the idea first, you know, and then from there, right, we take brand experience and activation as the big thought. Then the ATL and everything, right, supplements, supplements it. So instead of, instead of seeing an ad shell, like right, along the bus stop, right, where I'm just going to look at it, okay, my bus is here, right, and what we are doing is more of a brand experience thing to get you involved, to be engaged with the consumer. Um, we feel that that's more important more than anything else, more than a print ad, more than a TVC, more than a radio ad. Um, and we feel that that's the way to go, like to reach the consumers. It's more of, um, it's more of pull, pull advertising rather than push advertising, where I push everything to you and in your face, you know, these are ad shells, these are billboards and stuff like that, where we find that that doesn't matter. Um, I don't think people will see us as, um, like we are an upcycling slash advertising agency. I think it's more of that, okay, you guys have done this, you, die, you guys have done this upcycling shop, which I, like, you know, like we think is cool and stuff like that, but the main focus of it is um, government. That's what I'm looking um, for you for. If there's something that they find that, you know, like we can actually use stuff from the upcycling thing, then that will be good for us, you know, so that we can have both resources that we can play with. Um, but if it doesn't, right, I think for most of the time, it is more of like, they don't really see us as upcycling company. You know, they see us as an advertising company on its own entity. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, but there will be people that would think that we are upcycling slash advertising agency. But I think as, um, as we move along, as we move ahead, I think we just need to try and sway away from that. So it really becomes two different entities. One is more for passion kind of thing. It's just like what we want to do. And the other one is more, more from a business sense. Okay, so just one last one. Okay, make it quick. Sure, no problem. Sure. So my question is, if I'd love to cycle myself, would you, you know, just create like a space into your shop, like a fab lab, actually, just to allow, you know, some of us to create our own stuff, oh. spend time with you, brainstorm, or whatever it is. That would be great. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, the space that we have. It's probably like one ten of this place, so um, I think in the future we would love that um, um, to actually have like workshops. And we actually had an idea; we wanted to do that like over the weekends kind of thing um, to actually come together and like not create big stuff, you know, but like, like small stuff, you know, like your old jeans you want to make into a bag or your old T-shirt you want to make into a pouch, something like that. Like um, we need to get the the right people in because, like I said, like we are. I don't want to come to you and say, you know, I, I do upcycling, I know everything about it, I know how to cut and I know how to sew and I don't. Right? So like I need to get the right people to come in to do the workshops. 
you know, so that um, yeah, you get the right deal, basically. And I think at this point, we are not there yet. Like, we're still trying to focus on like, like, um, how we're going to move ahead with Artifact. And from then, right, when we actually, if we do expand, right, I think the workshops will be a very good thing. Because when you get more hands-on to what you do, right, I think, you know, like, that's the best. And you can do your own stuff, and we actually want to propagate that. Yeah. Right. Just remember to get his name correct. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Aaron. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful talk. <laughs>